Some people believe that healing is this beautiful thing when suddenly you relax and miraculously everything feels better. But today I'm here to tell you that healing can feel very uncomfortable in the beginning and actually you could be feeling worse in the beginning and you're still in the process of healing without knowing it. So let me explain a little bit further. So basically when you're doing emotional work to heal physical problems as well as emotional problems, you might start to uncover certain repressed emotions, certain issues that you didn't quite address. So basically what happens with chronic pain, especially and mind body symptoms in general, is that certain stuck emotions kind of are repressed because the individual hasn't fully processed them or the individual hasn't given his emotions enough credit. So basically these emotions get repressed. Sometimes the individual forgets all about the original cause of his distress and tries to get on with life, not knowing that there's something sitting there that's causing this, these physical problems. So the problems can be anything from chronic pain, chronic back pain, chronic neck pain, all sorts of pains. It doesn't matter. Okay. It can also be anxiety for no reason or depression for no reason. So basically we don't feel good. Sometimes we don't quite know why. And once you start with TMS mind body healing, you're going to try to start uncovering the reasons why you don't feel good. Now, some people would tell me, well, I don't feel good because I'm in pain and it's the pain or the symptoms that consume their whole attention. But basically, when you start working on, you know, mind body health, you have to shift focus from the symptoms because these are just the tip of the iceberg and start thinking psychological and looking into what what's causing these symptoms or what have caused them in the first place. Okay, so this is where the emotional work comes in, emotional work like journaling, for example, where you sit down and journal about the topic that may have, you know, may have proven to be bothersome or worrying or annoying to you. Okay, this is where some people would write a list of topics or issues and events that have been either traumatic or negative and that they would write about these events one event at a time and see whether there are any emotions that come up. Okay. So usually you would know that you've hit on something important when you're writing or speaking about an issue and you find yourself getting emotional. And this happens a lot, for example, in my coaching sessions. So individuals might start talking about their stressors, their obvious stressors. And yeah, I mean, nothing happens, but then Suddenly, maybe I ask a question or maybe they start talking about a different topic and they start getting emotional and they might start crying or they would tell me, I didn't know that this, you know, I had forgotten about this issue. I didn't know that this issue was so, you know, so distressing to me. So this is when the healing takes place. And actually at this moment, you might feel worse. Okay. You might feel really sad or emotional, you might start crying, or you might even feel really angry. And if any of you are familiar with Dr. Sarno, he attributed um, chronic pain to repressed rage. Okay, so in Sarno's opinion, the pain was just a manifestation of the rage within. The individual is really angry about something and he's not even aware. So if you're working on TMS, and suddenly you realize that you're getting angrier in your life and you're feeling more rage, you might think that everything's going, you know, that things are getting worse, not better. But if the rage is about something that you have been ignoring an issue you've been ignoring, if you hadn't been aware before that this issue has been causing so much internal rage, then I'm here to tell you that that still counts as progress. 
And it doesn't mean that you're going to be angry for the rest of your life. But this is just the first step. And at the moment, you are processing this rage and you are getting clear about how you feel. So the first step is always the awareness and getting clear about how you feel and also being brave enough to feel these emotions. And this is where some people shy away from this work because they might start to feel these uncomfortable feelings come up and they really don't want to deal with them. So unconsciously, the individual would make the decision that he'd rather stay with the physical pain and symptoms rather than face these troubles and emotions. In fact, this is why these emotions have been repressed in the first place, because the individual wasn't capable of dealing with them at the time. So basically, the individual would have to make a choice, either facing his emotions, okay, seeing where he's at emotionally, and if there's a situation that can be changed, maybe he would take action, or if there's something he needs to let go of, he would do the necessary work um, to release the resistance and so on. Or else he could choose not to go into this emotional stuff because he doesn't want to face it, but then obviously there's the consequence of having physical symptoms that might keep on recurring, okay, under, you know, the same circumstances and triggers. And I'm not saying that there's nothing else that can be done because there are other techniques that can help calm the pain response, as we know, and that can help, you know, promote a feeling of well-being and calm in your life, um, like meditation, for example. But even with meditation, I mean, if you're doing it just, you know, and you're ignoring the thoughts that come up and you're repressing the feelings that come up, then there's, you know, there's repression going on and not true healing. So we always, as much as possible, healing involves, you know, being in tune with how you are still feeling about something that happened or that is happening right now in your life. And it can be really uncomfortable. And uh, some people also experience an intensification of symptoms in the beginning once they start to feel, you know, those emotions come up because the individual, I mean, feels threatened by those emotions. And when we feel threatened, we're more likely to feel pain or symptoms. So don't worry if you've just started this work and your symptoms have intensified a little bit. If that's the case, just ask yourself, what are the psychological reasons that may have caused these, these flare ups? Okay. This pain to intensify. And think about what you have been reflecting on, what you have been bringing up in your journaling or in your work, okay? Because this will give you more clarity of the issues that you need to continue processing and addressing. And things will get better, okay? So I like to call it kind of the storm before the calm, okay? So there's always a storm first, you know, it's been brewing there, it's been repressed, call it causing all of these symptoms. And at some point, you know, it has to come out. Otherwise, if it's stuck, you're going to be stuck also with the, the same symptoms or with recurring symptoms. Okay, so this is really what I wanted to say for today to encourage those individuals who are still struggling or who are on the fence as to whether or not they should be, you know, acknowledging their emotions or looking into their past. It's not about, you know, getting stuck um, looking at the past or re-traumatizing yourself by thinking about a negative event. It's more about getting clear on how you're still feeling about that event. Okay. Making sure that there is no, you know, no rage bottled up inside that's, that's not being allowed any sort of outlet. And then you move on forward from there. Okay. That's all from me for today. I hope this video helps inspire some to continue with their recovery journey and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.